somebody was asking me the other day, how can it be that your surface temperature is colder than your slab? Alexander, do you have an answer for me? How are you measuring surface temperature? Is it an infrared gun? It is. Yeah. The, so typically, unless your unless your environment, unless your rink is very cold, that wouldn't be the case. And an IR gun is pretty inaccurate when it comes to measuring um, actual temperature. So if you talk to infrared manufacturers, um, and there's white papers that explain this, but when you talk to infrared manufacturers, the best thing you can do with an infrared gun is measure a dark surface as close as possible. So when you use an IR gun, it's good for relative measurement, but it's hard to get an accurate reading um, on a on a white sheet of ice with you know an inch or so thickness on top of a white surface. Okay, so would you recommend me like um, I have a big, huge blue C in the center of my eyes? Would I be better off to shoot that? Uh, you can. Um, are you using infrared as a control means? Uh, no, it's just to measure my temperature. Yeah, I would, I would, I would aim for the darkest, darkest area. So it's usually the blue line. What has your experience been with? Like uh, my experience with infrared has been that it's, it's a good controlling means, as long as, uh, it, depending on the facility, I guess is the short answer. Um, if it's a smaller facility, I would, I wouldn't use it in, you know, a collegiate application. Um, the the inherent issue with it, aside from trying to get an accurate measurement, is typically if you're going to use it as a controlling measure, it's going to be mounted up in the rafters, so it's going to be a, a far distance away from the ice. So it's already going to get interference from the environment. Um, and then depending on how it's used and the control scheme, the sequence it's put in place, if you use it to trigger compressors to turn on, you'll find that it inherently will cause erroneous energy consumption because it'll react to a surface or what's what it, th it thinks is the surface temperature um, but it doesn't allow for a flywheel effect of the compressors and the glycol to reclaim the ice temperature after resurfacing so what is your recommended way of running a a rink so we we typically would use a slab sensor, and it's kind of misnomer because you know uh, you're not going to put a temperature sensor or a temperature probe into the ice. I mean, you could, um, but we typically will put a, a slab sensor, a temperature sensor, on the bottom of a metallic cover in the ice slab itself. So that way, the the sensor itself is essentially reading the bottom of the thickness of the ice. Um, we find that. If you use that to, to control what you want the slab temperature to be, then the chiller plant will maintain a glycol temperature a few degrees below that. That usually seems to be the most efficient way to do it. Your systems are typically using glycol and not brine. Is that right? Uh, both. both. Yeah, I would say it's probably, you know, 70, 30, 70% 70 glycol, 30% brine. He's talking about with the sensors in the floor. I do have those in the floor and system shuts off um six degrees colder than the set point yep yeah it's typically between three and eight degrees below your active slab set point is where you want to run your glycol